Scary movies are best when they're scary. But it's not easy to do that. I grew up watching big classic movies with my parents who knew every name and every actor and every director. Night Stalker and Night Gallery, those are the ones that really grab me because they utilize the imagination. It doesn't matter if it's impossible. If I can convince you that it's happening and that happening scares you, I thought that's really interesting that, that a, a filmmaker can create a world to where you'll believe in this night gallery that you look at a painting and the grave is coming up and then you cut back to the face and you go back to the painting now that the coffin's opening, cut back to the face and now the, 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 the corpse is walking towards the house, you cut back to the guy and then you go back to the painting, the guy's on the front porch and he looks at the door, there's a knock at the door and I'm getting chills just telling the story and I think, I believe it. That's interesting to me. I was watching TV one night and I see the trailer to the X-Files pilot, which was the boy in the woods with the leaves swirling around. And I liked the lighting and I liked the imagination and I called my agent and said, just get me a meeting. Off I went. I fell in love with that show, head over heels, and couldn't direct enough of them. I told him at the beginning of the year, I want to direct as many episodes as I possibly can. And it was one of those things where I knew I was in a great period of my life and I knew this was very special. And I didn't want it to end and but things do come to an end. I had no idea that I was gonna go do a monster movie and the reason that's funny to me is I didn't like to do the monster episodes. I didn't think I was very good at them. When I shot the X-Files movie and the alien came on set, it was a guy in a rubber suit with Reeboks and I had this whole fight with the Neanderthal storyboarded. I threw everything out because I now knew I had to like shoot only long lenses and whip on, whip off, and just glances and glimpses and did a very sort of subliminal and subjective. And um, so to think that I was gonna go off and do a giant monster movie would have never occurred to me. Great teeth. There's a very thin line between what's scary and what's kind of funny. A bad horror movie, the teenage girl sees the monster and she does the big classic horror scream. Well, we laugh at that now. So what is the right reaction for a person who's scared? Now, I use the, the idea that when we actually get scared, we don't express anything at all on our face. We actually sort of freeze, adrenaline goes through our veins, and then your instincts kick in and it's fight or flight. You know it's a monster movie coming in, so you're just waiting, when are we gonna see it, and what's it gonna do, and how does it kill, and how horrible is it when it does kill, and I think that's a very, very important thing in a good scary movie is right up front, um, you have to show the capabilities of the killer. And then being very careful about how you manage that expectation through probability, and that you only use it a you know, a few times, you gotta be careful. You don't overuse it because if you fool them enough and you don't give them the monster, eventually they'll just, just, you're just crying wolf. It's the way you present the creature. It's the way you present the characters and the circumstances. It's very strict adherence to the tone, which is realism, and knowing that the audience is saying, okay, I know dragons don't exist, but if you play by rules that I understand in my day-to-day -day life, you know, when there's a killer on the loose, and the police say, lock your doors, you know, he's working in Burbank, um, everybody's scared. So you don't ever have to see the murderer. If you go to a family who's sitting inside their house with their windows locked and the blinds drawn and, you know, huddled around each other, and you see that they are truly, genuinely scared, we already get an impression of the, of the killer. And so I'm, what I'm utilizing as a storytelling device is what I say, expectation, anticipation, possibility, probability. You don't have to go to the next step, which is it shows up and eats them. You just get them to that point to where they're literally, you know, white knuckling because they're dead for certain that something bad's gonna happen. Oh God. One of the genres in films that people like are scary movies. I mean, it's a, certainly a genre movie, although I have very strict beliefs that the way genre movies work the best is if you shoot and produce them like an A movie. Raiders of the Lost Ark changed everything, and that people wanted to see first-class filmmakers make genre movies because they're fun and they deserve their due attention. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Come on! Come on! 
Good. Separate beauty. And that's what set me off on Reign of Fires. I thought, okay, monster movie, B movie, make it like an A movie, hire quality actors, get the story to where it works for the kind of movie I want and the tones are correct. Action. Now what I want is a massive amount of experience around me. I want to have people who have made large-scale, complex, classy movies. It was agreed upon between Roger Birnbaum and I, my producer, that let's not set out to do this if we don't make the new benchmark for dragons. And I'm going to make sure that they're as realistic as I can make them, that the scenes where we interact with them are as dramatic and as scary as I can possibly come up with. It was the recipe of Reign of Fire that attracted me. Tanks and castles, soldiers and dragons. That's kind of interesting. Timeless. It's medieval and it's futuristic. When I took this movie on, I started doing research about what dragons meant to different countries and was surprised to see the number of countries that all have their own dragon lore or mythology. And they're all different. The medieval version was that they were trying to basically figure out who was the greatest knight, who was the greatest warrior. And the only way you can define that is to put them up against a greater opponent. Dragons represent something that is supreme and impenetrable and overwhelming and intimidating. Knowing that the more outrageous or abstract the opponent, um, or mythological or not real, then you have to go the, the exact opposite with the characters. You have to create an absolutely realistic world where the people are living and dying in a world that is controlled by dragons. If they don't believe it's real, they won't really be scared. And there's a rule by which I work in scary movies, which is, okay, you want it to be scary, got it. It's only as scary as it is real. It's only as real as, as the characters. So in order for the movie to be scary, you have to have real characters. You have to put ordinary people that we recognize from the audience up against these extraordinary opponents. The more I get them to engage in the characters, the more worried they'll be, the more suspenseful they'll be, the more when they do engage, the greater the thrill. The wings are huge. At that point, you can sort of short frame the characters, right? Like you're framing for the dragon. So carry some sky above the trestle, right? A little more headroom. Big dragon wings, it's flopping around, it's very, very angry. I went to Ireland and shot actors in empty plates. What were the actors acting to? Nothing. <laughs> Trusting me immensely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you feel her, she's gone right over you. And saying, okay, the dragon comes around the corner and he looks at you and he snarls and he's about to blow fire. And then I cut to you and he goes, okay, that's scary? I go, oh, that's pretty scary. Okay, action. The uh, Cut, he's scarier than that. Oh, more scared, oh, okay, all right. Because I was kind of scared, but am, am I gonna die? Yeah, probably. Oh, got it, okay, let's go. It's all of that kind of stuff. And half the time you're laughing because it's ah, shoot, 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 pan like this at nothing. And then uh, cut. Great facial reaction, but you pan too fast. Oh, they're a little slower? Yeah, he's making a turn and they lose airspeed. And it's like, oh, geez, okay, fine, all right. I'll pan slower. How was the arc? Uh, you pan from his head to his belly. I did? Yeah, stay on his head. Which is where? Well, just keep panning the same speed. Oh, God, I hope you're right, Rob. Action. It is as insane a notion to go make a movie without the villain on set as you can imagine would be. And I get to ask this question all the time. Is it hard to make a movie when your dragon isn't there? Yeah. Because I'm praying that TSL does keep their promise and gives me these big scary dragons because I've directed it down a certain narrow path and the dragon's got to be right there. Hold there, dragon lands, and then just go right back. The trouble is that tension in suspense and action is created by the distance between the two opponents. 
further apart they are, the less concerned we are, the closer they are, the more concerned you are. So I need to keep the dragons as close as I can without breaking the rules that they can blow fire 150 feet. And if you're within the swing of his head and you're inside 150 feet, I hope you're a quick shot. Because you only have the moment for the inhalation to get either down the throat or in the belly because the next beat is exhalation and you're gone. You know, isn't it when you go see a scary movie, first you, you know, scream like that and you grab your girlfriend or wife or friend or whatever, and then you laugh. I got, it got me, oh my God, and you, you come out of that and I find that it's, it's actually an enjoyable experience after it's over that you survive. And you're laughing about, oh man, I, I was for sure, I was never gonna scream. And that thing jumped out of the shadows and I came out of my seat and you spilled your popcorn on me too. Oh, I'm sorry, I just, I lost myself for the moment. To have that sort of emotional or visceral reaction, I think is a really fun thing to do as a filmmaker, is if you can actually create a reaction in the audience. You know, make them laugh, make them cry, make them happy, make them sad, scare them. You can do those things, you fulfilled your promise as, a, as an entertainer to take them on a journey. And um, this one happens to be scary. Why it is people like scary movies over comedies, don't know. I just think it's another one of the powerful physical and emotional reactions we can have in a movie theater and that I enjoy it, and uh, you know, I'm the first guy to say, well, not me, it's not gonna scare me, you know, and then I'm like this.